Hey guys, how's it going? Dude here, I'm back with another video. Today we are talking about the case of Charlene Downs, also tragically known as the Kebab Meat Murder. So Charlene Downs was 14 years old living in Blackpool when she disappeared on November 1st, 2003. Charlene, from an outsider's perspective, came across as just your normal, average 14-year-old girl. However, she wasn't always the most well-behaved at school, having been expelled at the time of her disappearance. Charlene went out that day with a couple of her friends, and whilst out, she actually bumped into her mum, who was dishing out some leaflets for a local takeaway. They had a fairly jovial and friendly conversation. Towards the end of that conversation, Charlene's mum told her that she had to specifically be home by 10 p.m. This was a regular thing for Charlene. However, sometimes she would wander in a little bit later, but nine times out of 10, she was there bang on 10 o'clock. Charlene got on the bus with her friends and off she went and little did her mother know that would actually be the last time she would ever see her daughter alive. So fast forward to 10 o'clock, no Charlene. The parents are getting understandably distressed and worried. The dad did go out on his bike, have a little search, although admittedly, only for 30 minutes and he kind of felt that logic kicked in and that she probably just stayed over at a friend's house and just didn't let them know but she wasn't answering a phone or anything like that there was no communication to say where she was but they just assumed that she was with a friend at a friend's house so they just went to sleep went to bed woke up in the morning still no Charlene so then the alarm bell started to ring so they went to all of Charlene's friends houses no Charlene went to the friends that Charlene was with and they actually told the parents that they had left Charlene alone on the pier at 9 30 p.m that evening to go and babysit this led the parents naturally to the police who unfortunately told the parents that they couldn't find a missing persons case until 48 hours had passed and by this time it had only been around 24 hours this seems crazy to me because I'm pretty sure when people go missing it's the very first couple of hours that is the most crucial time to find them otherwise they're gone forever if for example people are trafficked it's those first couple of hours that are crucial right and the fact that police delayed this for 48 hours potentially cost Charlene her life but anyway, the police eventually started their investigation after 48 hours. They began knocking on doors, asking for leads. But there wasn't anything in the papers. The media weren't really covering it. And the family couldn't understand why. So the mother contacted the local Gazette. And the Gazette told the mother that the police had actually informed the media that they believed that this was just simply a runaway case that Charlene had upped and left which left the family understandably furious as the police had never said anything like that to them. As far as they were concerned, their daughter was missing and the police were trying their hardest to find her. But obviously the help of media and getting the face out there and getting it on the news, etc. helps build a profile of Charlene, helps get her image out there, which would then bring witnesses forward. After the mother kicked up a fuss about this whole not going to the media, eventually it was put into all the media, all the local news, etc. And leads did come forward. However, a lot of them led to nothing. Some people claiming to have seen her on a train. There was no CCTV of her on that train. One woman even coming forward and saying that they saw her dead body on a railway line that was never verified and so it seemed that having the media involved actually brought forward false leads which wasted more of the police's time which meant that whatever actually happened to Charlene was getting harder and harder to find as all these leads built up. Naturally with a child going missing the police then turn their attention to the family itself because a lot of the time it's malpractice within the family family, accidental death, things like that, and then a bit of a cover-up. So they began interviewing the family, but didn't really find anything of interest, which later in the video will be quite mystifying, but we'll get to that in a little while. So anyway, they had no solid leads at all. The case went relatively dead until three years later when the family were called in to the police station and investigators told them that they had news of two men that were being arrested on suspicion of the murder of 
their daughter. One for the murder, the other for disposing of the body. Now understandably this was absolutely shattering news to the family and the mother claims in an interview that when she was informed she was actually handed a hot coffee and when she received the news in shock she spilt the hot coffee on her lap and the scalding liquid didn't even process in her mind because she felt so numb from the news that she had just received. 29-year-old Ayad Albatiki, who owned a local takeaway restaurant named Funny Boys. He was the man arrested on suspicion of the murder of Charlene. And alongside him was Mohammed Raveshi, his business partner, who was arrested on suspicion of disposing of the body. Now, police didn't reveal to the family what they believed happened to Charlene, and how the family found out was actually through the newspapers. Now, there's a little bit of speculation here that I find hard to believe. So basically, the speculation is that the police went to the media before telling the family what had happened. And when you realize what they believed had happened, that makes this shocking. So what happened was the auntie reads a newspaper article that the police had revealed to the media that Charlene was cut up, grinded up, and put into kebabs and sold as kebab meat. Now the family were understandably furious and there's a lot of sources on the internet that say the police went to the media first. I can't get my head around the logic of the police bringing in the family to inform them that they're about to arrest two men on suspicion of the murder of their daughter, but then go to the media and reveal the reason. I think that this was essentially leaked. I think maybe this is obviously just allegedly possibly maybe there was maybe a bit of a sneaky journalist that managed to get it out of a police officer or an investigator and then leak the story. Because I just refuse to believe the logic that the police would go to the media before the family about this story, especially how horrific it is. And the police allow the family to find out through a newspaper. That that just doesn't compute or they could be careless wankers and maybe they did you know what i mean i'm not ruling that out i'm just saying there's a lot of sources on the internet that say all oh, the police are awful they they just went to the media and said that she was cut up and put into kebabs i just can't i, just, I don't know let me know down below what you guys think i just i just can't i don't have the utmost faith in the justice system or the police you know but i don't think that they would be that careless and and heartless especially when they when they took the effort to bring them in to tell them about the, them being arrested for the murder in the first place but anyway, the family find out through the newspaper that their daughter was apparently thrown into a meat grinder and the meat was used and sold on as kebab meat. Thus, the name kebab meat murder. Now, how did this come about? How did the police catch on? Well, one of the brothers of one of the two men involved apparently heard the two boasting that one of them raped and killed Charlene and then in order to dispose of the body put her into the meat grinder and then passed on the food in a kebab which is obviously beyond horrific and abhorrent and just blows my mind that someone could even stoop so low to do any of that but it actually unearthed a series of paedophile rings within the takeaway businesses as a front in Blackpool. So basically, these kebab shops were offering food, alcohol, drugs to up to 60 11 to 15 year olds in the area in exchange for sexual favours. And it was revealed that apparently Charlene was one of the 60 that was involved. And obviously somehow it went wrong and she ended up murdered. So it goes to court. And somehow, even with this evidence, they had them on tape boasting about it. After hearing from the brother what the boasting was going on, they actually bugged a lot of the phones, etc., around these two individuals. And somehow, it ended up with a hung jury. I don't understand how, if you're in a jury, you can hear these things, hear them on tape, and then be like, I judge, you know what? I think I just don't quite buy it. It just blows my mind. So there was a hung jury. It later transpired that one of the people on the jury knew the two individuals involved, which is a massive no-no on the jury. If you have any 
kind of relationship with anyone involved in a case, you cannot be on the jury. That is how the UK judicial system works, right? So that was a massive misjustice right there. Also, apparently, there was a lot of intimidation going on for the other people on the jury from people that knew the two involved. So every step of the way, there was a misjustice in this court hearing. So anyway, hung jury. So they are released. So because it was a hung jury, a retrial was ordered for February of the following year. Now, those tapes that were used and were quite pivotal in the original trial were thrown out of evidence because apparently the transcription from the audio to text was done incorrectly on a few words. And because it was incorrect, it was no longer viable evidence. So it was thrown out. And so essentially, without a body, because it was disposed of so well, without any transcriptions, the case was thrown out. Now, if these men were the people involved in her murder, just to add insult to injury, both men were given a quarter of a million pounds each in compensation for being falsely trialled. But this story doesn't end here, guys. So, maybe a week after the trial, the mother is arrested for stabbing her husband. The husband doesn't press charges because he understands that she's under a lot of stress at the time. In the years that followed this this case, it transpired, 10 years to be precise, it transpired 10 years later that the family were heavily involved in the EDL. Now, I'm not going to go into what the ED... We all know what the EDL are. We know what pieces of shit they are, right? Okay, I don't need to go into that. It also transpired that apparently Charlene was actually abused in her own home from the age of 11 to the extent that social services were involved. Also, it transpired that the family had some dodgy friends that would often stay or come and go from the house. And when I say dodgy friends, I mean people with rape convictions and on parole. The sort of people that you wouldn't really want around your daughter. So there were certainly questionable people. There was another development in 2017, 14 years after the disappearance of Charlene, and that was Nigel Lloyd. Now, the reason that he was suspicious was around the time of Charlene's disappearance, he had a business, a little cafe in the area, and then Charlene disappeared, and he just upped and abandoned this business and moved to another city. And the police, in hindsight, thought that was a bit suspicious, so they arrested him, held him for 48 hours, questioning him, but didn't have sufficient evidence, and had to let him go. That is the case of Charlene. That is the kebab murder, and no one knows what actually happened. This hasn't been solved, even though the case has a, a line under it and I don't believe it's been investigated anymore. Was it the the takeaway guys, you know? Was she ground up and turned into kebabs? I mean, they had a confession, but they never had a name. They didn't specifically say, Char, I raped and killed Charlene, and, but it was just a young girl. And obviously there was a sex traffic ring, a paedophile ring in the area. So it could have been a number of different girls. However, we do know that Charlene was directly involved and a victim of that paedophile ring. So there's that. There's also the fact she was abused at home. Was it, was it the actual family? Allegedly, possibly, maybe, I don't know. Was it this guy who upped and left for Preston? We don't know. What do you guys think? Do you have any theories? Please do let me know down below. I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much, guys, for watching this. I hope you enjoyed this video. I certainly enjoyed making it. If you want to support me as a creator, Patreon is an amazing way. Doing this kind of content in the paranormal, true crime, conspiracy kind of world, a lot of demonetization. So if you can help me out on Patreon, that is amazing. If you can't, don't worry. The main thing I ask of you is like, share, and subscribe the content. It helps me grow. I also stream on twitch.tv forward slash doodlyrhino, so go over and catch me there as well. Thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate it. Stay safe. Sweet one, geese.